In the fall of 1918, Max Weber addressed the students of the University of Munich with what would become his most famous lecture, Science as Vocation, Wissenschaft als Beruf. Here he presented the idea that would become emblematic for both his own work and for the self-understanding of enlightened Western spirituality, namely that we are living in a disenchanted world, an entzauberte Welt. In this condition, there are no mysterious, incalculable forces that come into play, for human rationality can now, in principle, master all things by calculation. At the heart of this diagnosis is also the question of death. In a world characterized by the progressiveness of human culture, Weber writes, death can no longer be meaningful. Unlike the biblical figures who would die satiated with life, death for civilized man is only a meaningless occurrence through which he is deprived of taking part in the continued adventure of humanity. For the same reason, there is no longer any room for the sublime and monumental in the public, political, and intellectual sphere, just as there is little room for prophecy, spirituality, and religion, especially not in the academy. Weber's somber advice to his students, spoken just a year before his own premature death, was to courageously confront this condition and to meet the demands of the day in a personal as well as in academic affairs. Two years later, in the fall of 1920, a new type of public monument was inaugurated, first in London and then in Paris and then elsewhere, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. This public memorial created around the meaningless death of an anonymous disappearance in the trenches of the Great War was made into a gathering symbol and place of reverence for the citizens of the modern national state. As these states reconstituted themselves following the disaster of nationalist imperial politics, they coalesced around the ritual piety and respect before the anonymous bones of someone who precisely in virtue of his anonymity could symbolize the collective loss and sacrifice of the nation. The exceptional symbolic and political importance of these new monuments were highlighted by Benedict Anderson at the outset of his celebrated study of nationalism, Imagined Communities from 1983, where he refers to them as the most arresting emblems of the modern culture of nationalism. For Anderson, this proved that nationalism is ultimately connected to religious fantasies and the desire to give sense to the cruel passage of time by connecting the dead with the not yet born, making the graves ripe with ghostly national imaginings. He even ridicules the idea that there would be a monument to a dead Marxist or liberal, since neither Marxism nor liberalism is much concerned with death and immortality. If Anderson had recalled the strange fate of the body of Karl Marx in London, and even more so the body of Lenin in Moscow, he would not have expressed himself so frivolously. The ease with which he at this point thought that he could handle the connection between politics, burials, and the dead, both among Marxists and their rivals, would soon look different. When Reinhard Kisselek and his colleagues brought together a large volume on modern war memorials and the cult of death 10 years later in 94, the tone was much more serious. In their preface, they spoke of the political cult of the dead as an anthropological given, without which, they write, history would be unthinkable. 